Welcome to Daddy vs. Doctor. Here are your hosts, pediatrician Dr. Scott Cohen and comedian Sebastian Maniscalco. Welcome to Daddy vs. Doctor. We are here today with some special guests, Megan Trainer and her husband, Daryl Sabara. Sabara. Yes. Sabara. I forgot that already. No, yeah, it's Italian. Hard. It sounds very Italian. Um, just noticed this, guys, by the way. Button missing off my left yes. uh, <laughs> collar. Okay. Uh, okay. I, I'm aware of that, just so the audience you're knows. Fl- yeah, you're flowy. Flair. You're very yeah. flowy. Very flowy. Today. Very Victorian. This is my era. light shirt, just in case it gets hot. Thank you for being here. We've got a lot to get into. Okay. New parents um, of two beautiful kids. Uh, can we say that? You're the pediatrician? Uh, Can we say that? Are we allowed to? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. And you've had a relationship with these two uh, for, what, over two and a half years? Three three years. Um, I got to ask you, how... How do you like it, your pediatrician having a podcast? Is this something that you... <laughs> <laughs> like, in L.A., it's not that weird, probably, you know? It's not that weird? Yeah. Have a pod- I, I, I just, assume that me. he helped you with your kids, and that's you guys made a friendship, and then you did this. Yeah, I, I was never this close. My family was never this close to Doctors, our pediatrician same. growing up. Our yeah. pediatrician we saw once a month, or once a year, yeah. and that was it. But now I feel like he's over at the house... We can't get rid just of them. That's yeah. smart. He opens the door and I'm just there. Yeah. That's smart though. You make friends with the doctors. Friends with the doctors. That's that's really because he asked me more questions about himself than his own. No, kids. I don't. He does all the time. I, I what do you think of this rash? I'm like, is that Caruso? No way. It doesn't look like Caruso. He doesn't have hair there. <laughs> his rash? On. Or yeah. his kids' rash. No, his ra- his oh. rash. Right, his, well, my rash. Exactly. You haven't started that yet, so I appreciate no. that. No, hey, no problem. No, he's a young kid. Um Ryan, right? Ryan? Yeah. Ryan? Yeah. Ryan's exactly. here, the brother. She brought the whole family. The The parents are about to show up in a yeah, couple of minutes. They usually would. Um, I got to ask you, before we even get into daddy, doctor, and parenting and what have you, about the music industry and when you make a song, and I'm sure you've been asked this question maybe before, but when you're making a song, do you know, this thing is so unbelievable, do you just, <laughs> did you just know it? For, um, have you heard Made You Look, that my latest yeah, yeah. song? That I could have my Gucci. I um, wrote that chorus in the shower, and then I met my older brother in the gym, and I said, is this trash, or is this good? And I sang it to him, and he was like, bro, that's catchy as fuck. That's amazing. And sorry, can we swear? Yeah. We can swear. He was like, that's catchy. That's it. So I don't, I'm always like very hard on myself, and I'm like, is this garbage, or is this a hit? So you don't even know. You have to get like an opinion from somebody else yeah, to clue um, you in very, on whether this is yeah, going to be. I, I live with my whole family, and I go through each one and go, "Do you like this? Do you like this?" Do well, you what like she this? does is she makes you listen to it, and then she watches you as you're listening to it. <laughs> oh yeah, I do that uh, too. That's got to be a lot or of pressure. I, I used to play it for like Uber drivers and be like, "What do you think?" <laughs> and like strangers. But being the husband, can you be like, mm, "Yeah, have you ever gone about that one?" Oh, he I could, me. I could, but I don't. Yeah, so no, I, I, <laughs> he's a good husband. He's a lot of opinions. Um, like recently, <laughs> over the years, I've gotten. I more wrote a song and I put the sure. word "ugly" in it, and he's like, "Ugly is just like an ugly word." And I was like, "Okay, you right, you right." And I changed it, and you was right. But at first, wow. I was like, <laughs> "Wow, it's fascinating because it, it it works kind of that way in um, uh, my relationship with my wife." Really? Uh, I'll throw something out, and it's um, it's glaringly obvious. It sucks because there is no laughter. I mean, the, the <laughs> laughter is kind of what. I was hoping for, but uh, sometimes you don't <laughs> you don't get it. But I'm looking at your uh, YouTubes, and it's like millions of 180 million views, and this, that, and the other thing. Uh, putting out a song uh, nowadays, all right? And I'm you know much older than you. It used to be you used to you used to get the radio to play it, and then the, you it used still to be, do. So is there a new radio that is is it YouTube the new radio? Are you hoping no, the video hits? What are um, we hoping for? Sorry, there's a lot going on. There's, there's, there's so many much. questions. I don't even yeah. know all the all the ways, but I know that TikTok helped me a lot. TikTok. TikTok was it's like a new place for music to pop off, you know, and then that helps encourage radio stations to play like what's the most popular song online right now? You're um, good on TikTok. I am? Yeah. Who knew? I love your TikToks. <laughs> I love when your wife like goes in a store and you're like, here I am. Oh, yeah. The, uh, waiting. I'll, the, I'll be right back. We, we haven't done that in a while. Um, 
And the cold plunge. You inspired me to get my cold plunge today. So when you go in the cold plunge, do you do the cold plunge? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hate it. Who, who's is our record record holder in the in Him, the? Probably. Yeah. What, what's what's your longest in the plunge? Eight minutes. Eight minutes you do? Yeah. Jesus. Oh, yeah. I don't know how anybody does it. Cold I do shower. Three. I can't even do a cold Done. shower. I know I can't do a really? cold shower. Really? Yeah. Well, once you do the cold plunge, the cold trapped. shower is easy. And do you Ryan's feel better? You really that. feel better after it? Yeah. Do I you don't do know. you do you though? Yeah. I don't know. I do. Wow. Do you, do you feel better because you're supposed to feel better? No, <laughs> yeah. no, no. I uh, uh, I do like three and a half minutes. Like uh -huh. I'll do that consistently, and around the three minute mark, whatever I'm pissed off about just goes away, and so I get out and I'm. I'm, I'm having a lot of postpartum anxiety, and so Ryan encouraged me to get in the cold punch the other day, and he was like my hype guy. He's like, "Let's go, you can do this." And for the rest of the day, I had no anxiety, and I was like, "Whoa, that's crazy." He's like. It's the most miserable thing, but it takes it helps him with his anxiety, and it helped me today not have a panic attack being here because okay. I'm nervous. Oh, <laughs> Don't be nervous. Goodness. This is believe me. This is <laughs> I would not I would not be nervous around this guy. I'm uh, so talk about anxiety now that you have kids. Mm -hmm. uh, who's the worry wart in the relationship? So it is me. <laughs> were you I'm like, like? Is he alive? You yeah. Know? So are were you like that? prior to having kids a warrior yeah, i've always like been a nervous nelly uh, a big what if gal you know um but with riley our firstborn he was a trick baby we were tricked yeah and that's okay we're recovering but he was perfect and easy we what's didn't a, need what's a trick baby it's when the first per uh, baby is perfect and easy oh so which you're means like the second one years oh, yeah okay. so yeah, we okay. were like we're gonna have four which i still want but i would tell the world like we we're so good at this this is easy babies are joke like the kid sleeps all day eats perfect and uh I, we didn't need a night nurse it was just us with Whoa. that baby and then the second baby is a monster he's not a he's monster not. he all, just he's, he's, not, he's not he's, he's so easy he, he, is so <laughs> he just cries a yeah. little bit more than riley he just did refuses to drink the bubba that i'm shoving in his mouth yeah, okay. and i almost called you yesterday because I'm crying, looking at him. He's crying, looking at me, and I'm like, "You're difficult because he just won't take it." And I'm like, "You have to eat." That's when everybody has to just take deep breath. Yeah, walk out of the my room, therapist hand is over like, the bottle. Yeah. My therapist is like, escalate. "He can feel you, yeah, so you, you gotta escalate, walk away." He escalates, he, and, and we it goes got back and um, forth. a doula and a night nurse, and that's been significant. Right. Let me talk about the doula because because <laughs> because we had one. Right? Had one or had multiple? <laughs> no, we we had a doula. I didn't know what a doula was. I, didn't, I know me either. One for I never still. had. Oh, I never had a midwife like <laughs> doula. Any of that. Any of that, right? So, we have the doula, and I'm 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 asking my wife, why is this needed? Oh, she helps with depression. I go, isn't that what I'm here for? And like I, I thought, like, like my to help her with depression. Well, no, uh, leading leading up to the baby, mm -hmm. right? A, a mm. doula, from what I s see, is she comes over. Bouncing on the ball, oh, there's yeah. a ball involved. I, didn't do any I remember. Of that. I remember. I'm a C-section gal. There can be a pre. There can be a post. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, we, there's a post doula. We, yeah, so we yeah, had the postpartum post. doula. Yeah. Postpartum doula. Didn't, didn't I, have I the knew I'm getting a C-section. My babies were both sideways in me. Okay. So we had to cut them out. All right. And then, <laughs> <laughs> and we just knew, you know. I didn't know how rare and special that was, though. That was like a point zero zero three percent or some crazy thing to have a transverse baby. Is that what it is? Um, and yeah, so he came, he came out big though, 8.7. And I was like, dude, Boy. he's going to be a sleeper. He's going to be an eater. And no, no, no. None of that. None. Let's talk, let's talk about that, about like expectations of being a parent, because that's a big yeah. thing. And I think I love your book, you know, Dear Future Mama. Thank yes. you. It's Thank amazing. you for showing so, it. Screaming. That's, that's, that's my baby boy. He's so, cute. so he's about two and a half right now. Right. Two and a half. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> So what I love about your book <laughs> is that, you know, I think, and we talk about this in parenting, right? Parenting, we all feel like we're on an island. We all feel like we're the only ones going through it. And that creates a lot of anxiety and it makes us feel like we're doing everything wrong. And then when you mm -hmm. start talking to people, you realize everybody's going through the exact same thing at the exact same time. And when you hear that, it actually makes you feel good and you feel that community and you can get through it and yeah. you sort of talk about that a lot with the book right yeah. was that sort of the impetus of the book yeah i felt i felt alone in my pregnancy and i was yeah. like but everyone gets pregnant all the time like i'm not alone and i made friends with strangers on the internet you know i was like mm -hmm. you're my new bestie and i would watch their videos but um then after that 
after he got out of me, I was in a mom group. And that mom group did wonders for me. It was actually in this neighborhood. What? Uh, so yeah. cool. <laughs> I've driven here before, but no, yeah. No idea we had a mom group in the neighborhood. You do? I don't yeah. even know my neighbors. None I of can them. tell you one of them. Okay. Yeah. We'll talk off air. <laughs> <laughs> and then, I mean, if you're okay talking about it, I mean, Riley initially went to the NICU. Yeah. Yeah. Right that's near neonatal intensive care unit. So Kids that probably wasn't as planned, right? You were assuming you're going to have a baby and you're coming out. Can you tell them out. what it was? Because I still don't know what it was. Well, I mean, he he was having respiratory issues. So he came out with some respiratory dis- distress. And sometimes C-section babies have that because you don't get that full squeeze of getting fluid out of your lungs. That can be um, part of the issue. And thankfully, it was a very short time in the NICU, only a couple days. And yeah. he just needed some extra support so that... You know, he was just asleep. He, was he wasn't crying. Anything. So when he came yeah, out, he, he was so a little floppy. And, and then Megan was going, as a baby. where's the, where's I the cry? I was like, yeah, where's the cry? But yeah. like for months, uh, he, if anything, he'd be like, eh. and we'd yeah. be like, oh, he's hungry. And he was like a dream. And then I was like, oh, is he one of those people like when they're older, he's like a serial killer. And we're like, he never cried as a baby, you know? But he's not, and he's perfect. No, he's perfect. But this yeah. baby fucking cries. Well, I mean, how, how was that experience? I mean, obviously going to Nick, you do you feel like, are you feeling like, oh, I caused that or- Oh, I this did. Is, yeah. It was me. Well, yeah, there was a, because there was, they, they kept asking me because she was still under the knife, really. So they were like, is mom on antidepressants? Mm-hmm. And we've clear, we cleared was. that with like three mm-hmm. of the doctors that we had yeah. before we met you. And, and I was on a low dose. Yeah, and mm-hmm. everyone said that it was fine, that happy mom's a happy baby. Mm-hmm. And because he came out respiratory distressed, I like still hear respiratory depressed because mm-hmm. that's like what I thought they were saying. Yeah. And they said, he's respiratory depressed because mom's on antidepressants. I was like, this is so weird. Yeah. But So uh, I was like drugged up, recovering from being cut open and having nurses look at me and being like, oh, it's because you're on antidepressants. That's why we're in the NICU. Okay. Yeah. And I was just like, Oh my God. And my parents at home are like, what's going on? It was like heavy COVID time and they couldn't come. And I was like, I don't know. I guess I drugged him up. I don't know. I did something wrong. Everyone said I'd be fine, but it's not fine. I don't know what's wrong. And I kind of lived in that limbo forever. And I never knew. And then being pregnant again, I was still on my antidepressants. And I was terrified every single day of the second pregnancy. Like, will my kid come out crying? And like even every ultrasound, I was like, hey, you think he has energy? You think like he'll come out crying? And they were like, what? Why, why would you ask that? I was like, I don't know. I just, I'm just wondering. And some doctors, like some very old doctors, doctors were like, well, what do you want, Zoloft? Like, and I was like, no, but I'm on antidepressant. And he's like, well, maybe. And I was just like, oh my God. Like, <laughs> don't say that to a big pregnant gal. Is, is there a, well, cor- is there a correlation? I mean, so, and that's our thing because we, you There's should, no, like, science a, 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 a that parent should it. never feel, never feel blamed. Mm-hmm. Period. And that's the hardest thing. Having a new baby, there's such unknown. Obviously, you're going to a place like the neonatal intensive care unit. There's so much going on. There's always this worry as a parent, you know, oh my God, are they going to be okay? And thankfully they are, but you don't want that added, oh, it was me, it was me. See, you were the best. You yeah, came in uh, as a superhero. Just about to say, like, and you were to... like, your baby's fine. Yeah. And we were like, oh, great. This guy's confident. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, thank you. And you never said once to me, like, oh, it's because you're antidepressants no. ever. No, and you know there is some correlation, or there we've seen that in some women who take antidepressants or SSRIs, that sometimes the babies come out a little depressed. Thankfully, it gets better, and and that's yeah. why I can say things like that because I've seen this over and over again. And it's like, okay, we're going to support a little bit, and the baby's going to be fine. Yeah. yeah. The vast majority of times, nothing happens, and that's why we say, "Happy mommy, happy baby." Your mental health is super important, and and I yeah. I tell my parents. That if my wife needed that or wanted wanted to be on a medication, I would be absolutely fine with that. That's my perspective because it has to go beyond the numbers and the the straight statistics. Mm-hmm. And we have to look at the family. And we have to look at the child. And and it was it was a short course. There's going to be no long term detriment to him. It's just such a scary thing for a new parent to go through any little bumps early on, and then especially yeah. feel guilt. Yeah, you know. And you talk about that here, whether it's you know postpartum depression or fetal loss and all these things that we harbor in ourselves that again we're we think we're the only ones going through miscarriages are so common you talk about it here yeah my my wife my wife had one and i handled it the worst i mean you know so we were we were packing for uh 
I mean, I handled it twice incorrectly. One was the pregnancy where we were heading on vacation. She was packing. She had left the little uh, strip on the on the bathtub for me to look because I was getting toiletries back and forth. I kept missing it. And she's like, <clears throat> and I saw it and I saw the two lines. And my first comment was, oh, you can't drink during vacation now? Oh, she's well. like, you want, you want to try that again? Yeah. I'm like, yeah, hold on. Let me out. exit. Yeah. Come back. Yay! We're <laughs> pregnant. I love you. Um, and then when we had a miscarriage, she thought that sort of my mojo oh. was had led oh. to that. I know, right? Yeah. 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 Oh, wow. wow. Yeah. So like, put that on you. Put that on you. Thankfully not. Um, <laughs> thank you not. Um, but these things are hard. But it's yeah. it's nice to hear when other people are going through the same thing, getting through it together. Mm -hmm. You know. So. Yeah, I, we had Serafina in the uh, ICU three times, three separate times oh, wow. for respiratory problems. And I, it's like you feel helpless. I mean, I, I know M Lana and I were in the uh, in the hospital room and um, I'm sitting there. It's like at, it's like one, two o'clock in the morning. And I'm sorry, I don't know what they're doing at the hospitals at one or two o'clock in the morning, but it feels like nobody's there. No one. Right? Like, yeah, it like, does. What what, what the, the hospital home. still got the same <laughs> yeah, business yeah, yeah. it had in the in the in the daytime? Why all of a sudden are we short staffed, We're short -staffed. at night? <laughs> like Vegas, like <laughs> yeah, 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 somebody's yeah, eating dude. red vines and it's the, dark. It's yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like that. There's one person on the, on the thing, and I don't know what you. I, I, I got to get your take on this. I brought in donuts <laughs> and snacks for the nurses. Yeah, for, for you, but for alternative no. motives. I brought donuts this time. Don't yeah. you think if you bring donuts to the hospital, you just get served first? <laughs> I you would. would. You would think that. <laughs> You're like, who, who brought the donuts? Room sixteen. And so when room sixteen rings, we go there no, because yeah. we got a glazed. My first experience <laughs> in there. Um, what wasn't the best with um like nurses and everything and then the second time because we didn't bring any we did second and time everyone, we brought everyone we said well yeah. you gotta bring gifts they're like did you bring gifts i was like no i, I fucked up i didn't bring gifts mm -hmm. and then the second time i brought donuts and you amazon gift, gift cards, cards yeah. and ha and wrote personal letters and then we were like treated like kings and queens right? and i was like I oh man it should make a difference <laughs> i want to say it doesn't but when i was a resident i remember yeah, they had like the licorice ready for me. I'm like, oh, I'm going to the I'm check on them. <laughs> yeah, first. I go check on them. Does, does that? But you didn't get checked no. on. Uh, I didn't get checked on, but it was it, again a skeleton crew at night. Yeah. We got one person working, and then uh, and uh, we felt like Serafina was really breathing in a rapid way, and like you, you know, my mind goes down yeah. the darkest yeah, tunnel, me too. you know, especially when you're first. kids. So let me ask you this: like, it, it, does that work in the pediatrician world? Where let's say. They bring in maybe a a pizza for everybody in the in the office. <laughs> of are they, course are, not. We treat everybody uh, the same. equally the same. I don't know. We we like cupcakes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> no, it should it should all be the same. You guys recently took a big trip. You were well, oh, yeah, Australia. Last time we talked to you. We were right, last ready time we were talking that. Australia. Right, you yeah. were judging Australian Idol. Australian all, Idol. It's all great. Um, yeah, we that trip. Okay, you know our our son was a COVID baby, like born in the very intense time of COVID, yeah. and he was a boy, first born. Lots of family at home. Does whatever he wants. He did. He was mute, like mute for a long time, mm. and. Scott finally was like, who should we talking? Like, we should get something. And I was like, I can't get anything out of him. Not like a mm, nothing, no noise. So we were like really concerned. We got a speech pathologist yep, yep. and worked with her a lot. And I didn't see improvement, but we loved her so much. And he loved playing with her. So we were like, okay, this is nice. When we went to Australia and brought him out of his comfort zone, he started like speak he was like opera house. And we were like, <laughs> yeah. what? Yeah. You couldn't say hi. And now you say opera house? Wow. So uh, it was, I mean, taking them out of their comfort zone helped a lot, but I was rattled. When you, it was, I mean, it's, an, it's another thing, you know. That was we, another big we, milestone. We, we focus on Hidden development speed. and that's the problem with books and internet that development is written like, you know, floors of an elevator, like on this stop, you're going to yeah. walk on this he stop. You're going to have 17 gonna words you're and I was like, oh, he doesn't have 20 anything. words. And I get that all the time. Parents come in and is like. Yeah, the the internet says it's like twenty seven words. I'm yeah. like, oh my god, no! But it's really more like you know an escalator on a continuum. Are we doing something now that we weren't doing later? And one of the things we talk about is Riley was always he understood a lot, but he wasn't 
speaking a lot. And usually that kicks in around 18 months to two years. So at 18 months, we had noticed like we really weren't doing a lot of that. So he uh, also yeah. gagged a lot. Yeah. Like all <laughs> like, motor food, he still does. And wasn't. I was like, I think his tongue's just not working. Like, <laughs> but also he is like super blind in one eye. Oh, he was. And that's the great thing about Scott and Scott's <laughs> office is he now. has like this really cool gadget that scans uh, the eyes, the, the spot eyes at yeah, yeah, year. One, the binoculars. Have I've you done, done that? that? The blinky light, the little look at I the birdies. That. My kids That's did. like a special yeah. thing that he you, has. You'd have to come to it's a video to know what we do with your children. <laughs> my, so, but believe me, I, 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 I think, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, I have to be in top five fathers that come to Showing the, up? Yeah. Come on. Nah. He, he's he's got you beat. He's really? never missed I'm not trying to get you beat. Yeah. I mean... I mean, no, you you show up to, like to I the, the majority. You're great. <laughs> right. I was gonna say he was that one that she wasn't even. Yeah, oh, wow. he was that one. Solo? He wow. was that wow. one that, that the kids weren't even at, which I didn't even understand. Yeah, that yeah. One. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, one. that's some millennial shit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. he is millennial dad. Daddy. That's what I'm going for. But yeah, um, he 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 could not see, and we were like, "Is that why he wasn't?" But talking? we noticed but a little bit of a difference after we he got his, his glasses. Ears. Uh -huh. We checked everything. You know. There was one point where you were like, "Go to this, bring him to this hospital, and do a full exam," and I was just too helpless and sad and didn't didn't make the call because I was like, "No, yeah, I'm not going through all that." And then my therapist helped me a lot, and she was like, "Walk, walk at one, talk at two. Because he wasn't mm -hmm. even two, you know, he was right. so young, but some kids can speak multiple languages under two. But finally, now he's two and a half and he's like advanced. Oh my God. He won't show He's up. like, oh, rumbus. He's singing two and a half. Like, he's in yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> No, he's singing every Crazy. night. He's he loves saying, Harry yeah. Styles. He's great. You gotta sing all the Harry Styles songs. Every but night. those two yeah. years, like, I'm already dreading it with Barry, our next kid, Barry. How cute is that name? <laughs> and <laughs> I'm already like, uh oh, bro! If this kid doesn't talk, I'm gonna freak out. <laughs> no, like, but whatever one is, the other one is different, so you won't have that. How do you deliver that information to a couple or a parent? Uh, he uh, called me later. It was nice. I, I, we often talk about this. You have to give sometimes yeah. bad news. Yeah. However, the the talking is not obviously a, 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 a not gonna die, right? Right. So do you go? Do you go? Listen, the kid should be. You should have 17 words. You say should have 17 words, or do you go, he's um, he's deficient in speaking, <laughs> and he needs help. Like, <laughs> no. I, I, no, I don't he's know what I would do. He's the best at doing it. No, yeah. Thank you. But, yeah. I mean, no, we, we talk about progress, but it is it is a really hard thing that even I, I don't feel like I'm great at because there's a lot of what I'm thinking, but I know I can't say exactly what I'm thinking. It's hard. And and I'll be perfectly honest. And we, we've talked about this, that when we talk about speech delay, one thing that always comes to mind as a doctor and as parents is autism, because that is what is in the And in, I have in it in world. my family. And you have a family history. Mm -hmm. And so at 18 months, when your receptive language is supposed to be great and you're responding to everything, but your words haven't really picked up. Sometimes your receptive language is delayed because your words are delayed. You know, I always talk about if you have laryngitis and you're at a cocktail party, you're not going to be the most gregarious person. You're going to go sit in the corner and have a drink because you don't have the voice. So a lot of kids who can't speak aren't social because they know oh, they can't and speak. At, and at the the class we would go to in this neighborhood, <laughs> he would try everything in his power to run away. All the kids were getting along and like having fun, and we were chasing him. Like, please stop running away. And he's like, "How's his social skills?" And I was like, "They're ass. He doesn't like other yeah, kids." Right. right. Like, so when you hear these things, so and they pile up. It's like, all right, well, is it just speech, or are there other things? And a lot of it, you can't tease it out in one session. It has to be more the progress. So we start one place and then we talk about do we need a full developmental evaluation in riley's case thankfully when we started speech as the speech developed and going to foreign lands and things yeah, like that yeah. he really came out of his shell and yeah. i rem i remember the visit vividly um it was actually our 21 month visit we had been talking about it at like the the 15 month the 18 month and the 21 month visit i had i think that was the one you showed up alone yeah and that's when i called you after and i know i was like of course the visit where megan isn't here yeah. and he's telling me oh he's actually three yeah. he's not even he's and, not even two he's just doing things <laughs> the three-year-old yeah. yeah. and i called <laughs> megan after because it was like the first time i literally i wasn't worried about anything anymore 
And I yeah. wanted her to know that because all the time, like when you leave, it's just you think about things. An like, amazing time that else? I will never forget, though, is um, one of the tougher days when we went in and he wasn't there on anything um, speech or like when you would ask him to do stuff. He was like, no, um, you called me later and it was bath time. And I was like crying all day because I just thought worse, worse, worse case scenarios. And then you called me and you were like, that was tough, huh? And I was like. Yeah, that was a tough day. And it was just nice that you called me just to t check on me. Yeah. And I was like, wow, I don't, I don't know if a lot of people get this, but that was nice. Yeah, and thank I appreciate you. that. No, I think he's doing Didn't that have with... have to do that, but that I was think good. he's doing that with every single patient he every has. Every single yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I try to remind him. <laughs> <that's laughs> not with everyone. Only the ones oh, that bring yeah. donuts. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's, I bring You've cupcakes. never brought cupcakes or donuts. <laughs> no, you have to, I think... Being, I don't know, you saw how sad I was that day. I know. I was yeah. a wreck. I mean, I, I really hope we try because I think the perspective of being a parent, it just puts you in that. You can be a doctor and you can read and you can just tell people how things are, like the book or the computer. But then you got to think about what if it's your child or in your shoes, how would you feel? Mm -hmm. um, because I know going through it as a parent has changed me as a pediatrician. I look back at my original patients 20 years ago. I have kids leaving for college now. And I I've asked mom sometimes, like, why would you have ever chosen me as a pediatrician? I was a single guy in their in his 20s. I was dating my wife long distance, of course. We weren't married at the time. I had just finished training. Like, I knew nothing. I was good at quoting things, but like, I had no no real life experience. And I think that's why the second child is easier in some respects because you have that perspective that totally. you can't have on the first. Like, are you already seeing things with Barry that you're like, I can't believe we did these things with Riley. We would never do this with Barry or well, it's too like, early. Some nights if um, we were struggling with which heart monitor to use to look at his oxygen. Uh -huh. And with Riley, I could not go to sleep until I looked at it and was like, okay, he's breathing, he's good. With Barry, I'm like, he's fine. Right. Yeah. Quickly, it's like I need to there. sleep. He's alive. He's good. You know. Yeah. It's funny we have all these mechanisms now that we didn't have growing up, like this oxygen hate thing. It. Sorry, you hate it. You hate yeah. him. Yeah. So, so you buy the oxygen thing. You buy the thermometer. By the way, can we? Um, what thermometer are you guys using? Is it a gun or is it the uh, gun? Right? Yeah. <laughs> Shooting him in the head. Yeah. On him, rectal. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, we're only five years married. We're not there yet. <laughs> <laughs> that should wow, be love. <laughs> That'd be good if levels of marriage. Yeah, levels of marriage. Yeah. Like, 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 I love that. <laughs> <laughs> so, you mentioned just on, on a sidestep on the Australian Idol. Sorry, I just feel like I'm talking to a baby. <laughs> 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 Level two oh, nipple. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I need to get those. The kid won't drink. Um, Do you pay attention to the crowd? or people in the crowd, if they're enjoying it yeah. or not. Mm -hmm. And it, I take it very personally if they're not. <laughs> really? Who do you look at? Um, well, if I'm at a Megan Trainor show, yeah. the crowd is lit. From grandparents to little kids right. to it's fathers, everyone's happy, everyone's singing every word, and it's the best feeling ever. When I get invited to do like a sports gig where other performers are coming on and the lineup makes no sense. Mm -hmm. And I look at the crowd and I'm singing all about that bass, like, love yourself every inch of you. And this guy's like, <laughs> flipping me off. What? I'm like, wow. I quit. I'm never going on stage again. I hate it here. And my bro's like, you did great, bro. You did great. Don't listen to that guy. <laughs> That's, oh, I swear, it's not as fun. No wonder you're on antidepressants. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and now people are getting thrown People are throwing yeah, shit at you. Yeah, what, what is and this? And my team is like, do you want to tour? And I'm like, not really. I don't want to get hit. Because I notice you're not touring. And is that by design? Uh, because well, you yeah, guys are... Yeah. Yes, wanna... that's by design. We're having, well, yes. we're having we're, some we're time. We had a baby. I just pushed out a baby. Yeah, yeah. That's well, the... cut out. But I had to recover. <laughs> and uh, I'm going into album Slacker. mode now. You should write back. And, uh, <laughs> I'm going... I'm about to start writing an album. And then hopefully can tour that next summer or something. Then you tour off the album. The kids will go? Yeah, what, what, well, they're gonna have so to. Yeah, I can't be away from them. I'll freak out. So, and I don't know. I've been asking my team because there's been families that've toured. People have done it before. Yeah, they're also very successful artists. You know, I'm like, what kind of tour am I gonna do? You know, I haven't been out there in seven years. So successful. Well, I said they're like, 
uber rich, you know, where they could be like, this bus is for just the kids and oh, us, yeah. and oh. this bus is for mm -mm, my one Your bus, bus. Is one for bus. Everybody. Yeah, everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the back little, of the SUV. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, pretty great. Well, I mean, since, you know, it's been a while since your tour, I think the appetite for a tour is definitely out there. And do you look at artists like this uh, Taylor Swift, who's, who's uh, selling out six sofas and going, I'm not there. <laughs> No, but I'm like, Not there. this is what everybody's talking about. Like, I, yeah. I've never seen like that's a, who's suc like su successfully touring right now is like a Harry Styles or Taylor Swift. It's really hard to tour, especially with everything that, that happened with COVID and the budgets and the scariness. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I just look at some of these tours and I don't know how other artists look at them. I look at them like, wow, the abundance of people that are coming out to watch music is is great for everybody no or is it people just picking one concert to go to and that's their concert right now too because of tiktok i, I love i love some of the questions the by the way <laughs> i'm looking what? at the side the side here at ryan and he's going yeah and i feel like oh shit <laughs> That's the bad guy. Plus, he's just he's did 15 just like, burpees anything, while he's yeah. asking that question. Anything you say, he's like, like oh, my guy, he knows. <laughs> <laughs> Those tickets um, are so expensive. Like, no, the ticket, yeah. Is that and it? it's more is it of real? like, wow. uh, it's turning into, yes, everyone, we love the artists and like, we're going to go see Beyonce soon, but like, it's turned into like that's the popular cool thing to do is like go to a Taylor Swift show, post the Instagram about it, make a whole video, a TikTok about like I just went to the show, but and then you get viral off of your moment that you had. You know, it's like a, it's like what the popular kids are doing. Yeah, I guess so. See, we're I going, we're Megan, going by the way Friday. We're going to the which Beyonce. not which date is that? We're, we're Saturday. Oh, I know. Oh, yeah, yeah. We're going to Beyonce. Let me ask you this: Are you wearing silver? No, I'm wearing what? a hoodie and sweatpants and sneakers. Oh, you're not even wearing silver. No, no, but you can wear silver sneakers. You have silver. I sneakers. do have silver sneakers. There yeah, we go. What did I mess? I guess Beyonce. Everyone dresses up in silver. silver. Oh, was cool. it Virgo like season? Pink and uh, aluminum Beyonce foil. Said, what are you wearing? <laughs> yeah, we one of those hats. I, 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 I believe my wife. My wife is going to probably be in all silver. I feel like I. I don't know if I could buy into that whole thing. You, you buy should. into it. You should be a disco ball. Mm. Like this shirt, but metallic so, silver. silver. <laughs> You mentioned the the tour and like traveling. So how was that first flight? Eighteen hours to Australia. You talk about traveling with your kids, oh, it's giving everybody chocolates it's awful. and stuff. What did you guys um, do? He was great on the way there because it was a red eye, so he slept on me the whole yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. The way back um, was difficult because it was nine in the morning, so that sucked. Um, but also, what sucked is he turned to after we went to Australia. So on the flight home, he had to have his own seat, and they were like, "Is he too? Put him in his own seat." And like right like, before takeoff, oh, like they've really? been seeing. Like he was on my lap the he entire was like, time. So and right before, my mom, I was like, "You're not allowed. Yeah. Sorry." Right before wheels up, they came over and no. they were like made me leave him. That's crazy. It was weird. They're like, is he too? I was like, on Friday he turned two. Like, give us a second. Like, we paid and you're for going, the chair. And you're going back in time, so I he's under two when you're yeah. back. So yeah. like, that's funny. That's funny. He's I be, spent the be... money. Let him sit on me. It's fine. It do he it. watched a lot of TV. Yeah, TV. Saved We're lucky us. that he put on headphones. He fell in love with Dora the Explorer. People, I, I'm all for that. I mean, yeah. when it comes to yeah. travel, put on headphones, watch to TV for mm -hmm. eight hours. Don't talk to anybody. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But you're lucky because two is around the time they'll do it. Under two, there's just no attention span for it. Under two, because we went to Australia twice. Wow. So the first Australia trip was when that we were bouncing around Australia. Yeah. And um, we got lucky. He napped a lot. He pretty much yeah. got into the habit of like, oh, I'm on a plane. And then we'd just like pass out. Because it was the auditions for Australian Idols. Yeah. So you had to like hop on these like one hour flights every oh, other yeah. day. Oh. So he knew like it's airplane time and we cut it with mama and... Um, so he made it though. We did like, we've done like 20 flights now. Now I feel like we can yeah. do anything. You look at other parents differently. I always joke because I, I, I saw a girl with a two yeah. under two. Yeah. On and that plane. Like, I was like, said, alone. You alone. Did it. Right? Alone. Oh, you, and I, yeah. I, after, at the end, I was like, I'm so proud of you. Because <laughs> we had my mom, my brother, we had a nanny with us. Mm -hmm. And we were still exhausted. Because my wife says, I have the luck of the pediatrician. When you're sitting waiting for the plane in the concourse, wherever that 
worst behaved screaming kid is, they're always within one seat of me. And I always just envision that viral video of like pediatrician screams at child, like loses his shit and screams oh, at child. I've never seen that. No, no, no. no. I, that's what I envision oh, would happen. God. God. I like, if I, if I do it. that, you are the video. So I have to be like, I don't mind the kid screaming and kicking my <laughs> seat. Cute, it's cute. okay. <laughs> it's okay. How can I help? Have you guys yeah. seen like the new like Apple Pro goggles that are going to come out? No. Where we don't even what? have to worry about screaming kids anymore? What? No, I, I've seen the goggles. The VR goggles. Well, that's no, they're that's they're about. marketing the goggles as like you go on an airplane and you just put the goggles on and then you're just in a movie theater. So like the screaming kids go yeah, away. Scuba diving. You're just like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah but, what? What, you don't you, you don't hear them. No, yeah, no, because you're going to be no. in like a VR world. Yeah, I know, but like I, I put the the noise canceling headphone on, I still hear the the baby. Yeah. Do, they, <laughs> do, do they have something? Do they have something else? Special? No, I just I, I just had so. this happen to me on a flight from Northern <laughs> California. Yeah, yeah. Are I, you sure they're on? Yeah, no, they were on, but I mean, I, the the baby shrill was so high, <laughs> it was penetrating the. Uh, oh, no. But the headphones. But before I had kids, I would have looked at that mother and said, just like Ed Millette was yeah. saying earlier. Shut the kid up. What's going on <laughs> now? I know. Oh, the ears could be popping. There, mm -hmm. there could be you know oh, yeah. many, many difficulties that are happening with it's the child. Trying that, to the yeah, uh, <laughs> you gotta have a little Benadryl in your pocket. See, <laughs> like we've done the trains or we've done planes and stuff, but we haven't done buses. That's what I'm nervous about. Yeah, I know Riley will love it, but I'm like a baby. Oy. I couldn't imagine being on a tour bus with my family. So yeah, you tour and you leave the kids home. Uh, or you just have them visit each big city. We we didn't really. I haven't really toured on a bus with the kid. No, they don't. No, I don't do buses. I don't like buses. Are you that? Are you that rich? You just fly. I'm not rich. I'm just. <laughs> I'd rather fly. Yeah, and I can't yeah. sleep. You fly to each fucking show. I I don't. I some don't type of want, successful. <laughs> <laughs> I have Bert, Bert Kreischer. He loves touring. Oh. And I was like, "Are you rich? You fly?" He's like, "Yeah." Uh, <laughs> You know what? I'm Italian. Even we never talk You'll about never we never it. talk about money. Yeah, house is never nice. talk about money. <laughs> Thank you, I appreciate it. But like, I you know it's it's we it's it's no, I I don't like sleeping on a tour bus. And I, don't I don't either. And I don't think kids but that's would the like only it either. Way. <laughs> I want to I want to sidestep here on the video, uh, and I forgot which video it was. It's with uh, the Kardashian, the oh, mo mother, the, the mother. <laughs> Is, that, bless you. Is there oh, a, I mean, a friendship on, there? Is there a friendship that, with that the Kardashians? That you have with her? To, is, that, is that a favor? Or is that like, yeah, I'll do your video for $2 million. What? Uh, what no, is, she, is, she, she uh, yeah, is she, well. Um, <laughs> you know, I mean, I'm, I'm just, I'm seeing that going. Favor, yeah. Yes. Because <laughs> um, just, my, I feel like she's speaking a friend. foreign language and she goes no, no, to no. you for like. <laughs> What is the word? It's a favor. I told you. Okay. He's my life coach. He's my life Literally coach, my hype guy, my brain. release. My bro it has to come with me everywhere. Um, yes. F uh, f there is a mutual friend. And the mutual friend said, Chris, do this if you ever loved me ever. And Chris was like, okay, I'll do it. And she liked the song. And now she loves me. And now she's Auntie Chris. That's great. But I also, <laughs> but also, also want to ask you, you that. And maybe I should like, ask you I this. I know how you feel. Does Gucci send you shit? Nothing, no. Oh, my God. Really? I would think this would have been a and, great partnership. And even more, that, even more than that, when I do a photo shoot, you can't wear those logos. Oh. I got to take them off. Wow. I got to photo shoot them out. Really? And I go, but like, why? Yeah, it's only good like, for you. Yeah, yeah, They can come at me and be like, take it down. Could you wear it on tour? Like, uh, Could you wear like a live performance? I think so. Ryan? Yes, yes. I just can't. <laughs> like, you know, have you ever experienced that where like you're going on, um, like the Today Show or yeah, something yeah. and they're like, no logos? Yeah, or, no logos. Yeah, yeah, it's like that everywhere. But even in my album artwork, I couldn't have any logos. Wow. Well. Yeah, I don't really run into that. But a lot everyone is I'm like, Do polka you dots. Get <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, flowy. <laughs> But everyone asked me that. They're like, it's Gucci and Louis. Even my mom was like, we should get them to send us stuff. I was like, mom, I'm not allowed to wear it in the video. So, no. Oh, I thought that would have been a no brainer. Oh, yeah, me too. W were you guys always so close growing up? Uh, Irish him and twins. I were Irish yeah. twins were a year and five days apart, hated each other for a lot of childhood. Yeah. yeah. But in high school, we bonded and then we were the trainers and we would really? roll to every party together like, the trainers are here. I love that. Is it just you two or any other siblings? There's a younger brother. 
And is he uh, in the mix at all? Yeah, yeah. He just moved out out of the house, though. He lives with me. They both did with us. And (laughs) (laughs) all right, so now wait, I need to hear that side. So coming into that marriage, and she says, "My brothers are living with us." Yeah, you're you're totally far from the get go. He like raised them. (laughs) What? I mean, we like we joke that there are our children, that there are little our boys. I gotta tell you right now, you're like a saint. Yeah, I know. (laughs) He's a good guy. I mean, but I want to hear the truth. No, the, <laughs> the truth is you worship them, bro. The, okay, no, no, no. The truth, the truth is that like I, uh, I'm not very close with my family, and then I marry into this big ass family who all love each other unconditionally, uh-huh. and so like I gained a lot. Um, and we all we were all in like our young mid twenties mm-hmm. when we met, and so we all were going through young mid twenty year old guy shit. The three of us, uh, Ryan and Justin, her younger brother, yeah, and like now with two kids and we're married and we're in a new house like we all have our shit kind of more figured out than we did and we respect each other a lot more and yeah. our old house is kind of like a frat house and yeah. he used to be was... a big drinker oh, and yeah. now he's yeah. sober and now we're all like super healthy super fit what's the new he health helped me get sober we do oh, really? cold plunge yeah. we're like you know we're trying to be the best people we can be we have our podcast working on it, That's right. we all... on it. it's like family therapy it's great Wow, I oh, like yeah. see, and I like that idea. Communal. I've, we've always said like communal living with like people that you love and respect and family and friends. There is something to that because then you know when you're having issues, this group can be over here discussing this mm-hmm. and commiserate and all this stuff. That's kind of so, how their family is, just like by nature. Yeah, um, I think it's the Nantucket Island. And my them. uncle is our. Um, He's our house, house manager. manager. So his he's wife, there every day. His the wife cook in the house. Helps cook healthy recipes for me. <laughs> and and her my mom her is assistant. my assistant. She's there every single day and she's like our other babysitter. So someone's always with a baby at some point. But what's awesome with but kids is day. that both Riley and Barry always have their uncles around. Yeah. Which is really, really cool. Great. And yeah. Ryan's a great he uncle. Loves Uncle Ry Ry. Yeah. And you have built in babysitters, which yeah. we don't have. That's what we miss. It's back nice. Years. Yeah. It's so fascinating. <laughs> <laughs> so a lot of people ask us to do a show on it well do, do you, does uncle call you and go you need any help out there or do you reach out to he, the uncle he was in new york and he um which uncle yeah what are you talking there's about? two uncles out there my uncle is our Her house uncle. manager that's what, That's what you're talking about, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay okay yeah he was living in new york and every time i went to do jimmy fallon or the today show i would get to visit him and see him and he was I don't know. I don't think he loved his job. He was job. sad. He, he was sad. sad. <laughs> he was in his apartment with like, all these beautiful plants, though, and I always admired that. I was like, "This is sick," and I was like, "Dude, why don't you like move out to Cali with us? We're all out here, and like, um, we could help you get started, or you can help me with my landscaping." And and now you wouldn't believe what my house looks like. He's really? so good, and he was just doing landscaping, and and then he started hearing all the construction problems we were having and he having and he was the only one that really cared and so we're like yo i'll hire you as my house manager if you like take over all this chaos and now he's at my house all the time doing such a great job well it's fascinating so he's uh he, he took him basically out of new york brought him out here to california almost gave him a kind of a new a new lease on life. life yeah wow that's but having great. the kids around all of it, I mean, it's got to be amazing for them to always have the family around. They're so happy. Yeah, I mean, yeah. And every night we're like, Riley, who do we see today? And we run through the list of everyone and yeah. what they do. Well, we're the bad seat. Where's the uncle like stealing money? Like everybody's got that person. Yeah, in the family. They're, yeah. They're, they're, not, <laughs> they're not like in Cali, you know? Like, yeah, they're spread out. We got family. Have you have you had like family come out of the woodwork going? Uh, yeah. No, week. which is shocking because my dad is old. He's like 75 and my mom's 55 and 20 years apart. Oh, wow. And he had two wives before my mama. Mama was wifey number three. Wow. Young gal. She was like 20 and he was 40. And so every day we were like, is there going to be a kid coming out? (laughs) 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 But nothing yet. Where did you two meet? We met randomly at a house party in 2013. And then we got set up on a blind date in 2016. Oh, yeah. At the house party, I was a baby songwriter out here and... Um, it was like the coolest LA thing I ever got to do. How old was I? Like 18. Mm-hmm. And then he, they just heard the party going on, him and his friend, and they crashed it. And I was like, oh my God, it's Spy Kids. Have you ever seen Spy Kids? No, movie Spy Kids. No, no, no. Yeah. Okay, so your children okay. need to watch Spy, spy Kids, kids, kids a great movie. tonight. Right. Right. Yeah. He's a famous spy. Oh, I, I never, I'm, He's like, right. kids Bro, movie I, 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 who's your dad? Antonio? Antonio Banderas. 
Come that's on, your father? Man. That's his yeah. father. <laughs> in the movie. In the movie. <laughs> oh, oh I, I, I thought it was his father. That's his father. Because the red hair and the Italian yeah. last name go with yeah. the Hispanic. He's probably <laughs> 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 adopted. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, um, going on. But he was a um, big, <laughs> big famous kid star. And so when he crashed the party, I was like, oh my God. And I went up to him and was like, are you spying? And he was like, yes. And I was like, wow. And then two years later, I became famous pop star with All About That Bass. And then we got set up on a date, and I was like, I hope you don't remember me, but we did get turned at a party a couple years ago, and he was like, I do remember you. Couldn't forget. Wow. Yeah. I and I wrote sorry. a song before that day that was like uh, called Hopeless Romantic, and it's like, I bet we met at a party, and I bet I already walked by you and like lost my chance, and then we're like, Aww. that was us. And then seven years from our first date, our second son was born, July 1st. Or we consider our first date like our it was anniversary. a C-section, so I was like, "Can I pick this date?" Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we, we cheated it's a little. Special. Bit. <laughs> yeah. That's oh yeah, a good story. Man. Thanks. Wow. We're magic. Life. Where did you uh, guys first live when you moved to Los Angeles? So you've been here for a while. Yeah, I grew up here. Uh, I did those Spy Kids movies in Austin, Texas, but I'm an LA native. And but her first house that she had out here was in Toluca Lake. So yeah, and I no. Well, we rented a place before that. La Brea. Oh yeah, we started. I lived on La Brea. Brea. Right there. I lived on uh, yeah. Hauser. Me and my brother. <laughs> I lived on Hauser. Were you in, in uh, Park La Brea? Or were you no, like no, in a no. House? I was. Uh, I was in a small, uh, one bedroom right behind the Ralphs on Hauser and Wilshire. You know where that is? Know you know, I don't know anything. It's, it's right by you. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah. You want to grab a mic? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so we started funny. Park Brea, then we rented a house, and then we started dating. And day eleven of dating, I had to leave for tour. That was the last tour I've ever done. And I said, "You want to come visit and see the first show?" And he was like, "Sure." And then I never let him leave. And then we got a two week break, and we moved in while we were on tour. They were like finishing setting up this the first house I ever bought here in Toluca Lake, and then we went and visited it. And we had a break and he grabbed his backpack the next morning and was like, bye. And I was like, where are you going? You live here. This is our home. Wow. We were very fast. Yeah. Wow. We we're very yeah. aggressive. Yeah. 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 I was very like, territorial. Yes. Mm. I was like, don't leave. You know, I was <laughs> I'll like, find this is you. your home. <laughs> He's like, should we talk to your brothers about it? I was like this, I bought it. So it's our home now. Oh, <laughs> wow. yep. Yeah. I was living in my car, so it was really easy. To just yeah. Wow, that's <laughs> right. yeah. Let me get my stuff out of the truck. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Wow, that's fascinating. That's perfect relationship, family, everything. Yeah, no, it's 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 really nice, especially living out in Los Angeles to have family around. Yeah. And my mother's here uh, with us for four days. She lives in Santa Clarita, but it's nice having grandma around the house. Is when my when my wife's uh, parents come in and they stay. It's good. I mean, I miss that because I grew up with it. I grew up with aunts and uncles and cousins and what have you. And now when you move to L.A., you have kind of none of that. But uh, you miss it. I do. I mean, my sister lives out here. Oh, that's good. Everybody moved out here except for my father. My father is going to die uh, <laughs> doing hair. Like, my father's a hairstylist. Yes, yes, yes. I and, saw the movie. Oh, you did? You saw the movie? Okay. Great. Thanks. Thank you. I loved it. Appreciate it. <laughs> um, oh, there's a, another question I want to- My dad's upset that, like, we dragged him out here, I think. He was a jeweler. He was like, I'm going to die at the desk. And and he's and now out. he's just like like visiting, doing house projects for me, and I think he's going crazy. Yeah, because you think your father would just live out in the. Oh my! My father would want to come out to California. It's just that he loves Chicago, right? He loves the three months out of the year that you get to spend in the backyard. After that, you <laughs> see. <you, laughs> I know. I was like, I don't get it, man. Right? It's nice East, here. Yeah, East Coast. You know, there's no yeah, living outside. So yeah. sad. Uh, <laughs> But I don't think he's ever going to come out because he's never going to retire and he's going to do hair until he dies doing a, a perm, you know? <laughs> I think that's what makes parenting harder these days than when, when we were kids because we had a nuclear family and there were more people around. You could, the grandparents, the cousins, the uncles. So like you just hit questions with them and they had answers and everybody had experience. And now we all live so separated and that all we have to connect us is like internet and, See, I and, refuse. and bad information mm -hmm. and classes that tell you all the things that you have to do, which there's lots of right ways of doing it. And it creates a but lot also of things issues. change too. My mom, when she had us, she was like, Y'all are supposed to be belly down, remember? And yeah. now she's like 
back on is, the back. Yeah. You have to be on the back. She's like, so when I ask herself, she's like, first of all, I don't remember. Second of all, <laughs> everything I was taught <laughs> was is wrong. wrong. So you sat in the back seat without yeah. on the floor without then, a seatbelt. Then and she told it. me how Nana back in the day, I have a hundred year old great grandma that's alive right now. She said, oh, wow. cause they didn't have, they didn't think of mittens to not scratch the face. Yeah. They would put cardboard on their arms, <laughs> oh. tape it to them. <laughs> now really? their arms and now like child protective services would come yeah <laughs> and my nana also saw we were facetiming her and she's like it would have been so nice if we had pacifiers i was like what think of all they the things they could have invented that. my mom saw the my breast friend you know like the the nursing pillow uh -huh. yeah she's like why would somebody buy that and i'm like what do you mean she's like you just we took a pillow you get a pillow off, <laughs> off our bed and propped it up or yeah. didn't one of the two like but these are like billion dollar business businesses yeah. it's so some funny. stuff is incredible and then yeah what was the craziest item way. you bought that you were like, why did we buy this? Um, oh, well, there hasn't been a why did we buy this. There's oh, been there a crazy been? item that I bought that I'm very proud of, and I feel like all parents should buy this if they can. Um, I went on Amazon and I Googled, like, a, if imagine if I lived in a tiny apartment in New York City that didn't have a dishwasher. And it's like a dishwasher that sits on your sink and a tube goes down the drain. And it, it literally has a baby bottle option. So all my dirty baby bottles I put in this dishwasher that's in my bathroom and I have not had to wash a single most people, they just bottle. get like the sanitizer, but you still yeah, got to clean gotta the bottle. Uh -huh. The sanitizer, that's the stupidest thing. Yeah. Or you could put it in your regular dishwasher. Or you could do that. You could, but, but that's all the way downstairs. <laughs> We're all the way upstairs. You, you had the, 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 the wipe warmer. I oh, I still yeah, have, we got, those. We have those. I use it for myself. For yeah, Beautiful. my baby will have warm wipes. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> Um, do you read to your kids at night? I, I often ask this question to parents and cause I wasn't read to at all. It was like, good night. Uh, yeah, I, um, I got a back rub. I got lay down time and I would take that over a book. You, you got a back rub as a kid? Oh yeah. And, and are we can continue that tradition or are we? Yeah, yeah, I do that. We read at, um, at nap time he gets a book, but for him, a book is a party. And so we're like, no, no, no. We're going to sing our little Coco lullaby and then we're going to come here and calm down. And then we discuss the whole day. Like, was today the best day ever? And then we go through it, and then I go, want me to rub your back? And then he flips over. Calm down time is different Calm for her time. than it is for me. It is for you. It's, he just fucks with me. He just fucks oh, with me. Yeah. He just They're slaps screaming. me around. I shut the door like, good night. And then it's, ah! Yeah. And he's beating him up. And then, like, we're on the rocking chair, and he's like, faster, faster! <laughs> and, like, wants me to throw him off the chair. And like, For me, he's yeah. like, oh, pretty mama. Yeah. See, but everybody's <laughs> doing that. We just, we just had... Somebody tell us an amazing story in my let about since his his since he was cutting the cord literally till his child going to college every night he would say how beautiful how amazing how everybody loves you and like every night like a mantra that's what I'm trying and to I've do I've missed like 15 years of that yeah. with my so own you girls I'm like oh now. my god so you're saying the <laughs> same thing now. I need to write the, I got it it's like yeah. affirmations like you yeah. get right. affirmations yeah. every night that's but I like one of my teenagers when I walk in the room she just tells me to get out so like I can't even get to the affirmation it's like through the door like good night honey slip it under and the and then the, the other door. one will appease me and then after a while that's she's gonna be also, like you, did, yeah. you just they make it phones. just make it better with text and then text. send her a TikTok of affirmations and then just Ooh, that's good Ooh, that's nice everybody does communicate better like my wife and I's relationship is better over text too we're much more loving and oh, somehow yeah. when we're in person it's like what happened to I love you how was your day yeah. today? <laughs> that's my emoji like that the emojis yeah. help how do you parent differently. He's like, it needs to be a schedule. Blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, if he doesn't get a bath tonight, it's not the end of the world. You know? Mm. Well, you can take a family poll, right? You just have everybody no. vote yeah, on yeah. it. Not, not on those things. <laughs> I tried things. that. And not on, not those, on those things. He's like, no, no, no. I Whatever goes in my kid. Like, my mom thought it was hilarious that we get the giant gallon filtered water or something yeah. from mm. CVS. She's like, really? I have to go get more of these? Okay, great. He's going to have perfect water. Like, she she Googles at us. But I- no fluoride. I love it. I love it. No fluoride. No fluoride. Bring up fluoride free. <laughs> oh, that's my Cali well, well, no. We're going to talk about fluoride. <laughs> All right. All right. Wait, you want fluoride. Wait a minute. Oh, let's, shit. Let's, let's talk about the toothpaste. Yes. I, yeah. I heard, mm -hmm. and maybe this is wrong. I heard it too. That you're not supposed to be using toothpaste? Right. But then I heard people get mad. 
Because the idea is to fluoridated toothpaste. No, I'm talking about like adults too. Like toothpaste is not. Right, not, I took not, it out too. Good. I don't Why? know, but then because I hear doctors. Because there's something in the tooth. Like isn't there something? I mean, you, you I think we have a similar algorithm where we're seeing like the conspiracy theories. Now I heard it's terrible. When you just got a pull of coconut teeth, oil, you know? know, just like you know, do that. I'm doing pink like. Himalayan, Himalayan salt. salt for toothpaste. Really? Yeah. yeah, I heard pink salt's no got? good either. Oh, well, yeah. shit. Listen, you know, you know, <laughs> what you know, are you guys you know, talking about? No, you know what We're I'm just trying to live just, forever. Yeah. Oh, We're doing God. everything You're wrong. Gonna have, uh, <laughs> I'm on this. I'm on this thread now <laughs> yeah. on Instagram where um, you can't touch your receipts if you if you. If you oh, I go receipt this, list. This, I don't kill a tree. Oh yeah. Well, 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 well that's, that's a whole other deal. I'm talking. There's EPA in the receipts, and apparently it gets into your skin, and then you pass away. I, so, I was like, did you hear like Tide Pods are out now? We can't do that. We should be eating them. Well, for sure, <laughs> yeah. but like they can't even put them on our clothes. What's Tide Pods? It's a di- re- direct Tide link the to little detergent the best, that easiest the way to wash your clothes. Yeah, 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 They're yeah, like, yeah, that's craziness. cancer. Skittles, everything. Skittles, you can't have Skittles oh, anymore. Oh, the the red dyes, you're not supposed to have. Yeah. But that's yeah. the problem. Everything is bad and everything's okay. And, you know, a cup of coffee causes cancer, but three doesn't. I don't know. What? I've been having two. No, no, no. I'm just saying in general. No, but fluoride is actually a good thing. So at most most water has fluoride in it. That's why drinking faucet water isn't a bad thing because you want fluoride. It helps strengthen the teeth. And we don't do fluoridated toothpaste in kids because if you get too much fluoride, you'll get fluorosis or just spots on your teeth. So that's why typically up until like two, so two a and a half. Thing? Well, yeah, I mean, yeah. Yeah, oh, well, okay. no, you're more prone to- I thought ca- it was like a brain thing. No, you're more prone to cavities. Uh, it, it softens the teeth. Okay. And so up until two and a half, roughly, we say just- Regular water or baby toothpaste is really just for flavor. It doesn't have fluoride in it because they can't spit it out. You could technically do a pea size and it wouldn't be a problem. After that, fluoridated toothpaste is actually a good thing because, again, it strengthens the teeth. But if you don't want, I mean, you guys don't want Our toothpaste is the fluoride free one. It tastes like cake. And every night we go, brush your teeth with cake. And he goes, oh, brush your teeth with cake. Well, yeah, but at his age, right, because we don't want them swollen tooth. Well, no, but, listen, a lot of these kids' teeth look like shit. I'm sorry. Yeah. I, don't, yeah. I don't know what's going We're on with kids' people. teeth. No, no, you're yeah, you got beautiful like teeth. I'm, 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 I'm talking about okay. kids, uh, five, six years no old, my and I know you're not a dentist, but I live with a lot. One. Yeah, you live with an orthodontist. Sleep with one. She's wow, my, you she, guys are bald. She's my wife. That's amazing. Orthodontist. She's an orthodontist. She's the one who straightens teeth. Wow, power couple. Wow. Oh, y'all are She's rich. the power. Wow. Yeah, yeah no. Megan, That's all right. Money. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool, cool. Teeth are bad. No, no, it, 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 Your kids are bad? Listen, I'll tell you something. It's all about momentum. I was going into a tooth pit. And then you guys, <laughs> sorry, sorry. Sorry. and you just can't, you just can't pick up the energy now in the no, no. toothpick. <laughs> no, 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 your right? kids have terrible teeth. It's like teeth. you're singing a song and somebody interrupts you, and then you're like, well, no, I gotta no, pick up right, right where no, I left off. No, your kids have bad teeth. No, my kids don't have bad teeth. Okay, well, who are you talking? <laughs> well, what are kids you looking at? You don't at? even know where I was going with the story. Oh, okay. I was saying you said kids these days have shit teeth. Kids these days have Ooh, shit teeth. If you look at kids' teeth, <laughs> Where? they look like shit. Okay. A lot of them just be, just is. Isn't there like a, an epidemic going on with kids' teeth? <laughs> is that They're, true? It's like yellow. It's like they look like they've been drinking uh, diet coke since they've been one. That's all I'm saying. I I, I that just know the bit. Teeth. That's the bit you were revving up for. Is it your kids' friends? Short, I had to shorten it up. Okay. What is this? Do you have a lot of British friends? No. What's going on? No. <laughs> No, that's not, that's not where I was going. I had to like, I had a bail on the bed <laughs> because the attention Dude, I, was. I'm so sorry. I have to watch your next Netflix special to find out about bad teeth and kids. No. Like I could already see it. No, I, you I loved you in kids. Vegas. Were you in Vegas? No, but I saw it on. TV. Oh, on the thing. Yeah. Okay, well, thank you. Like, uh, I didn't go. When I, well, I, I thought maybe you, house, I thought but... maybe you would have went to a live show. I don't know. <laughs> That's they would have would have hit you up for tickets. Yeah, well, I would have had, yeah. had to give them eighteen <laughs> tickets for the entire family. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I'm I'm there October sixth to seventh. If you're if you're around, <laughs> okay. you come, you bring your baby bottle. Okay, good. Um, <laughs> All right, listen, we, we got to thank you guys for coming on the show, all right? Uh, I can't, like, end the show with you <laughs> sucking, on, <laughs> sucking on a nipple. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm sweating, then I got to pee. Dear Future Mama, available oh, on you. Amazon. Pick up a copy. A great read. And uh, I know you busy, busy people, especially with a family. We are so glad you came in and spent an hour with us here on Daddy vs. Doctor. Other than that, I do have a book recommendation, and this is how I'm going to start ending these um, ending these podcasts. Literary recommendations? Yeah. <laughs> you? Yeah. Oh. You read? Yeah. Um, <laughs> you audiobook. I audiobook. Yeah. But I read to my kids. Oh. 
and uh, there's a book that I'd like to recommend out there for all you people. It's called My <laughs> My Friend Maggie. Have you read this book? No. Okay, I highly recommend you getting My Friend Maggie to read to your kids at night. It's one of my favorite <laughs> okay. favorite books. Do you have a Do you have a, a kid book recommendation? Yeah. What's the busy street? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Busy street. Yeah. Busy is street a, is a banger. Yeah. Busy street. I got one. What do you got? But I mean, this was 15 years ago. Not a box. Not a box. You know this? Mm -mm. Best book ever. Okay. That's why. Not a box. Not so a box. it talks about, just read it, not a box. <laughs> Talk about not boxes a box, and my not friend being Maggie. Well, my friend Maggie, I'll tell, I tell you a little bit what it's about. Yeah. It's about a fat elephant, oh. right? Mm -hmm. That's in the playground. Everybody's <laughs> making fun of fat, fat Maggie, right? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, there's a little animal that kind of befriends Maggie, but then everybody's like, don't hang out with Maggie. And then Maggie, at the end of the day, kind of saves the day. So it teaches you. I feel you like you don't have to read. That's probably longer than the book itself. Mm. Pro probably, but I tell you what, every time I get into Do it. Do they say, like, Maggie's fat and they make fun of her? Yeah. Or is like, this your Ma interpretation? Maggie's big. Oh. You know, like, uh, okay. We've never had comments on our podcast one time, and now we're going to get comments. <laughs> about fat elephant? About fat, yeah. fat elephant? Fat, uh, about oh, fat what, you can't say fat it. anymore? <laughs> you can say a <laughs> large elephant. Yeah, yeah. I think all elephants What do you call a, an elephant that's heavy? Big. Fat. Uh, yeah, a heavier <laughs> elephant. <laughs> <laughs> no. my friend maggie also available on amazon <laughs> That's no, no kickbacks i do at some point either you two or your brother has to teach us a tiktok dance are you dead oh, oh, oh yeah do you want to do that now i want to do, there, a TikTok you dance. Want to do that you guys have a tiktok you think i don't do the tiktok dance uh, it doesn't matter i just want to i want to learn a tiktok like okay. like 15 That's seconds like of a goal tiktok of yours? yeah because my girls always say Oh, oh shit! Is that the one? It's really hard. Yeah, that, oh. What's an easy one? There is. Uh, is there a baby step one? <laughs> is, is there? Is there like a? Um... Mine are really hard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like all that. A boat? Well, no, I mean three moves. It's just so long. Just... What? What's a? What's like? It a... would take like forty minutes. No, no. What's a beginner <laughs> one? minutes. Like a three move <laughs> beginner one. Like a step touch. It's, it's... Body roll, something. Yeah, it, it's it's not. There's, there's I can a, like a sequence give you the of, challenge, of, and your your daughter should be able to teach you. Right. And then next time I see you in the office, we could do it. Okay. Did you come up with the dance? No, Berkey and Jesse, these amazing girls in London, came up with the dance. I didn't even like ask them to. They were just really sweet and liked the song. And then it popped off, and I learned it. it took me two days to learn, and now I got it like the back of my hand. But. Like if you heard that, Kevin like Bacon what moves it. would you give to? Play it again. All right, play it and let's Hit see it. the moves. <laughs> <laughs> what would you do? This comes to out this? at the club. Yeah. yeah. What would it's, you do? It's a slow walk in. No, I wanna... It's a slow. Oh, walk it's a slow walk in. I come I on... like, oh hell yeah. yeah. I come on out of the dance floor. <laughs> hey, hands in pockets. It's just, uh, <laughs> and then I, yeah. this is this is basically my dance to every song though. It's, uh, yeah, it's high cool arms, uh, yeah, and a lot of a lot of shimmy. Oh, yeah. 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 That's, good. Yeah, that's a lot of improv. Yeah. That's, that's, <laughs> that's why really you amazing. need the flowy pirate shirt. Oh my god, to, uh, the flow is good. That's good. Wow, thanks that's for good. dancing you to do, my you song. You do have good rhythm. Yeah, I know. I, 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 I listen. That was good. Growing up, <laughs> I used to wear this shirt uh, at the nightclubs. Me and my buddy Francesco, <laughs> <laughs> we used to wear these shirts. And it, on the back, you say Italian boys. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Did you have that monogram? Like Halloween. No, we Jubilee. bought shirt. I don't. I, we oh, went to like we went that? to a store and had an Italian boy shirt. And we thought we were a habit. Like holy shit, <laughs> that's us. <laughs> that's us. And we used to wear these shirts, and we used to go to a place called McGreevy's nightclub uh, for teens, and we used to dance. That's all we used to do was dance. And in my fraternity. In Northern Illinois University, <laughs> we were known as the dance fraternity. So wow. girls, girls would go, gotta go to. You were a dancer. Yeah, I was a dancer. I, I know how to move. That's cool. Yeah, not as good as I used to, but uh, I used to impersonate Michael Jackson at the Whoa. ice cream socials. That's it's, hard to do. Do you dance? He did ballet, and oh, then wow, in that's a whole spike, other bro. That's, really? that's in the movie. Other there's a scene where he does. I gotta go see this movie. You guys see the damn movie? Spy Kids is a great movie. Yeah. And your kids oh, would like it. Two. There's three of them. You There's three go, of them. You can just yeah. repeat it back to back to All back. Right. Repeat it. And my yeah. kids can watch it? Six and oh, four? Oh, they will love it. Yeah. All right. And they'll be like, you know Spy Kids? All right. Yeah. Junie. Junie and Spy Kids. Yeah. I'm in.
And I will get that. You better wolf. fucking I'm watch in. it. I'm gonna and and the elephant every book. Day. Uh, and the uh, and I'll Fat buy the Maggie. elephant book if you watch it. Fat Maggie and Spike. Fat Kids. Maggie. Watch it. Read it. A double feature. <laughs> All right, we're out. Awesome. Yay! Hey, thank you. The opinions expressed in this program are not intended as professional medical advice, as a diagnosis, as a treatment protocol, or as a substitute for professional medical advice from your physician. Please consider your own medical history and consult with your own physician for your specific health care and or medical needs and about your concerns for yourself and your family.